Eleanor of Aquitaine. Her name resounds through the ages in a way that few names do, and no other woman of her time has done. Her life was extraordinary. She was self-controlled, independent and vibrant. She led armies in her lifetime and was a leader of a crusade, in a time when women were usually mere chattels of their lords. A child in Poitou was secure, rich and safe. Her education solid, languages and literature, her brain developed and used. But when she was 13, her father died. She was married to King Louis of France, rumoured to be more monk than man. And unsuited to be king, she provided him with a girl when he needed a male heir, and unhappy in her marriage, plotted to end it. Amazing for her time. She went on a crusade to hold and save Jerusalem, en route causing a gossip that scandalised the world. She was believed, having no relations with her husband, to have had incestuous connection with her uncle in Antioch. And then many said, with Saladin, the leader of the infidel. The former seems likely, the latter not so. She revelled in the rumours and made a bid for freedom, asking for her marriage to be annulled. This was not allowed and the crusade was a disaster, as were most things that Louis planned. Then back to Paris, where another girl was born to her. Then she met Henry Plantagenet, a damp, dynamic and powerful man, soon to be King of England, son of the Empress Matilda. Months later, Louis agreed to the annulment and she was free. She left Paris immediately and the world was agog when eight weeks later she married Henry, wasting no time at all. To him she produced eight children, several being boys, overshadowed at first by Matilda. She came into her own after the Empress's death. Power and control to Eleanor were vastly important, but she was never a monarch in her own right. Henry did not delegate power to his son, so they rebelled and Eleanor uniquely rebelled, siding with them too. Unheard of for a wife to act in this way, Eleanor was doing again exactly what she wanted. She was captured, and Henry imprisoned her for 15 years, years of sore trial and exasperation for the individual spirit. On Henry's death, her son, Richard, came to the throne. She was freed at once. Came to power while he went on more crusades. She was ruler for him. When he was captured, she raised the ransom. On his unexpected death, she secured the throne for her son, John. She died possibly unaware of his evil rule not knowing he would lose so much of the empire that she and Henry had built up. Eighty is a grand age now, and certainly was then. Her resting place is next to Henry, her true and once loved husband. <laughs>